Hello friends, in the previous session we have concluded our discussion on the terminal characteristics of the cumulatively compound motor. So I told you in this particular session we will be starting with the terminal characteristics of a differentially compound motor. Now in differentially compound motor I have already told you the shunt winding and the series winding are magnetically opposing. That means the net flux would be equal to the shunt winding minus the series winding flux. All right. So this is the basic relation. They are magnetically opposing each other. So I have shown that in the diagram also as per dot conventions, you can clearly see this is the uh, differentially compound motor. All right. So if you have not seen the differentially compound motor, go to the video introduction to compounded motor. In that I have clearly explained what is the dot conventions which are to be used. Okay. So I will just write it down here. So the shunt MMF and the series MMF and the series MMF oppose each other. So that is differentially compound motor oppose each other. So let us just see what happened if you just load the motor. Okay. So let us assume that the motor is running which it will not. But let us assume the motor is running and let us load the motor and let us see what happens. Now as IA increases what would happen the flux series would increase. Flux series would increase. IA increases flux uh, shunt winding would not increase only the flux series would increase. So what would happen the net flux would fall down. The net flux fall down which means obeying will increase. Now most of the loads available have an increasing characteristic. That means if I just put the uh, torque versus speed curve here as the speed increases the load also increase so it is like this most of the loads are having this particular characteristic either it will be a linear or it will be a uh, square to n square t can be proportional to n square t can be proportional anyway the final thing is that the load would increase the t load would increase so that means the torque load would increase this is the load characteristic okay so this is the load care now in order to compensate for this the motor has to induce more torque. So torque induced increases. Okay. And torque induced increases means IA would increase. To increase the induced torque, who has to increase? IA has to increase, right? Because this is not changing. It. IA has to increase. Now IA has to increase. What would happen? The same cycle would come. It would come to this particular one. So IA increases, flux series increases, flux decreases, omega increase, again T load would increase. So this is called a runaway condition. It starts with this point and again it ends at the same point. So this is called a runaway condition. So as a conclusion, what we can write is that the differentially compound motor, the differentially compound motor is unstable. So it is not a stable motor, right? it is not the torque load is never becoming equal to torque induced. Torque load is continuously increasing and to along with that torque induced is also increased. It is not coming to a stable position. It is unstable and tends to run away. Tends to run away. You can take down this point. Now I have already told you in a DC shunt motor also such a problem arises. For example, omega versus torque graph I told you. It would be actually like this, but due to armature reaction, it would go like this. But I have told you, due to the armature reaction, it can slightly increase. So if you severe armature reaction is there, it could increase like this further in DC shunt motors. Now this condition is worse than the that condition. So it is worse than a DC shunt motor with DC shunt motor with severe armature reaction. It is not a good motor. Now, let alone talking about after it is working. The differential motor will never start only. It can never start. Now, I have told you the flux shunt and the flux would be opposing. So, let us assume that the flux shunt in this direction. And the flux series, because it is opposing, it would be in this direction, right? I have already told you. During the starting of the motor, that the instant of starting where omega equal to zero, the armature current will be huge because there is no back EMF, right? So armature current will be huge there. So the flux series would be very high because flux series is a function of armature current and flux series in differential is opposing. So at starting condition at omega equal to zero, the motor will never start and worst it might rotate in the opposite direction. What would happen here is that 
the magnetic polarities would change the magnetic polarities would reverse the magnetic polarities would actually reverse in the starting condition and because of this what can happen either the motor rotates in the opposite direction motor rotates in the opposite direction and if this does not happen the motor cannot rotate only and that high armature current will burn the motor instantaneously because the in initial current is very high starting current is quite high and that motor if the start does not start rotating and unless eb increases ia cannot come down uh, you can know that right ia is equal to v minus eb by ra so unless eb increases ia cannot come down and this motor is not at all rotating so either it rotates in the opposite direction or it does not rotate it does not rotate and the windings burn instantaneously windings burn instantaneously that is the armature conductors would burn instantaneously now in case you want to start such a motor what you do is that you actually short the series winding actually you actually short the series winding during the starting so that there is no effect of the series winding so the current can pass through like this and you can use the starting methods and the motor would start but in reality there is no application for differential motors all right just because there is a cumulative motor you can have a differential motor so there is no application for differential motors no application for differential motors differentially compounded motors or they are not intentionally used also okay they are not intentionally used now this word is important they are not intentionally used that means why do we have to study this motor in case why do you study this motor the reality is it is not intentionally used but there is a case when it can become unintentionally used okay so that case comes in a dc compound generator all right we have not started generator but you know what is compounding right so in a cumulatively compound cumulatively compound dc generator let us see what happens let me just first draw the circuit here for a generator now the power flow will be from the motor to the sorry from the generator to the load initially it was from right to left from the supply you are giving it is going to the motor now it is a generator so it will generate emf so let me just draw the cumulatively compound remember that i am drawing a cumulatively compound generator now so i am drawing this is my armature so it is generating a voltage ea so now the current will be in this direction right so ia is going to come here and ish is going to go here and this is going to be the load current all right so this is a generator all right so to be cumulatively compounded the current has to enter dots in both windings so i am marking my dots here now for some case because it is connected to a grid like system assume that the polarity the power reverses that is somebody is forcing power into this generator okay somebody forces the power into the same generator all right so now let us see what happens here it is quite interesting so initially the current is moving out right now somebody is forcing current okay the power reversal occurs here so power reversal so this is the same motor cumulatively compound dc generator now so here current is entering the undotted area current is entering the undotted area here right current is entering the undotted area and this of course the current is going to split into two like this and like this and at one end the current is entering the dotted in the shunt fielding winding the current is entering the dotted and the other end the current is entering the undotted area so what has it become the cumulatively compound dc generator due to the power reversal it has become a differentially compound dc motor all right due to the power reversal due to power reversal due to power reversal the cumulatively compound dc generator becomes a differentially compound dc motor and this is a dangerous condition because now that generator will have all the problems of the differential motor all right so in such motors what they do is that such generators for example let me convert it back into a generator now uh, or let me just take a no i'll just use the same diagram 
So in such generators, what they do is that they have a circuit here. They use a circuit here before giving the voltage outside, which is called the pow reverse power trip circuit. Reverse power trip circuit. What it does is that if the power is flowing like this, it is well and good. So it will allow the power to move. But when the power moves here, this circuit would trip the entire DC generator so that it does not become a differentially compound DC motor. All right. So this is why actually differential motor requires a little bit of study because unintentionally a cumulatively compound DC generator becomes a differentially compound motor. Okay. So if you want to draw the torque slip characteristic, it's very clear. So this would be the speed and this will be the torque induced. I've told you as the it will start from here and as the torque increases, IA would increase and the speed would increase and it would be something like this. So this will be the characteristic of a differentially compound uh, motor. Okay. So let us just uh, conclude our discussion with speed control. Speed control of both these motors for the cumulative and the uh, differential. So basically whatever methods you are using for shunt motor which is the RF control, field resistance control and the VA control which is the armature voltage control and the RA control which is the armature resistance control all these three methods can be used and the characteristics are exactly the same. So these are same as the shunt motor, same as the DC shunt motor. Okay, There is not much difference. And because differentially compound motors are not used, uh, there is no point in discussing all these things. But for cumulatively compound motor, it is same as the DC shunt motors. All right. So I hope you have liked today's session. In the next pro session, we will look at the nonlinear analysis of cumulatively compound DC motors and differentially compound DC motors. Uh, it will be a small numerical so that we can understand the nonlinear analysis. Okay. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe the channel. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.